Welcome to a quick demo on monitoring and troubleshooting in SharePoint. There are various ways you can troubleshoot or monitor SharePoint. We are looking at the version SharePoint 2013. The first way is to go to the event viewer and observe what are the events in the application. Click start and type event viewer. Under the application log, you can see a lot of events. For example, if you see, this is an event saying there is some job fail for SharePoint administration. The second method is to go to the central administration and view the monitoring link. Click start, launch the central administration as administrator. Click Monitoring and click Review Problems and Solutions. This page lists all the problems and probable solutions under various categories like security, performance, configuration. For example, this error is telling that you need to do a product or patch an installation on server. Most of the times, the links to the solution is also provided. So this clicking on an item shows you the uh, event as well as the explanation and the remedy also with the link. The next method of analysis is through a tool called ULS Log Viewer, which is frequently used tool. It is a free tool from Microsoft, which can be downloaded. You can download the ULS to a local folder and open the ulsviewer.exe file. Click File, Open From, ULS, and this is the path where SharePoint log files are stored. Click OK. So this is a listing of all the SharePoint errors. This tool is very useful if you want to search for a particular correlation ID. So this pressing this just shows the information. Or if you want to see the media messages, you can click this. If you want to see only the high critical messages, you can click this. Opening an item gives you a detailed message as well as the time at time and the server and the category in which the server has occurred. The next way of monitoring is through the SQL logs where you can uh, configure the maximum number of days a log file can be stored. Let's just connect the SQL Management Studio. Expand Management and SQL Server Logs. Right click, configure, and you can here configure the number of error log files before they can be recent, recycled. This is related to the SQL logs. Next method is through the developer dashboard, which is a small icon at the top right corner. For example, in a central administration page, you at the top right, you can see the launch developer dashboard. This describes various information like the start time, the duration, CPU time, the memory, all correlation IDs, the scopes, SQL, the SP requests, service calls, the ULS, cache calls, etc. To enable developer dashboard, these are the sets of code. You get an instance to Microsoft.SharePoint.Administration.SP web service, content service dot developer dashboard settings. You update the display pro level to on demand and you update the trace enabled to true. Then you call the update method. Then you can view the developer dashboard from all your SharePoint sites. This is the developer dashboard link. You can launch it 
to view the developer dashboard from a SharePoint website. Now let's try to get the correlation ID. We shall try to induce an error by uploading an exe document and we shall see how we can view the correlation id either from uls log or from powershell exe files are blocked so this should throw an error So we got the error message, the following files have been blocked by the administrator. You can view the technical details and the correlation ID can be copied using this. You can note down the time also if needed. Let's copy the correlation ID. In the URLs log viewer, click this filter box and select the correlation contains and click OK so these are a list of error messages where you can even view which site error occurred and if you look at the unexpected category it shows a detailed message the following files have been blocked to solve this issue either you have to make it unblocked or inform the user that exe files are blocked. The next technique is the performance monitor. Click start and open server manager. Expand the configuration. Expand Diagnostics, Expand Performance and Monitoring Tools, Open Performance Monitor, Right Click and Add Counters. Once you add the counter, you can view the status in a graphical format. And take any action if needed if there any any rich symbol which comes the last but the more powerful technique is the PowerShell the SP diagnostics gives various information for example you can view the log, log location here and you can also modify it this can also be viewed from the central administration in the monitoring page you can view configure diagnostics logging and this is where you can specify the path. A health, to view the health report, you can click view health report. This page is the configure usage and health data collection, which helps you to enable usage data collection, which is necessary for the uh, switching on the developer dashboard. Let's go back to public. The Get SP Diagnostics Performance Counter helps you to uh, track the usage details of the usage database. For example, the performance counters on the front end as well as and database servers in the farm. This is a sample output of the Get Performance Counter. Let's now try to view the log. You can use the command merge-sp log file where you can specify the path where the log files can be stored and the correlation ID which can be passed and the level if needed and there are and you can overwrite the file if needed there are other parameters which you can pass like the start time the end time the process thread ID area category so this is a very powerful way to search for the log this could take a few minutes to run okay the command has run successfully you can view the log file from that path. You can open up the file, see demo, and error powershell.log, error details, sorry. 
So this contains the details in the notepad. Let's try with another command. So this is a simple command, a get hyphen sp log event. And we are filtering the if correlation ID using the where filter. And we display only the event and the message, event ID and the message. And we are displaying only the unexpected messages. Let's run this command. This is the result of executing the PowerShell script. Also, sometimes the web page just breaks. For that, you can go to the con append the web page link with contents equal to one and go to the web part maintenance page where you can remove any unwanted web parts if needed. If there is any error with web part, you can just select that and remove it and the page can be restored to a good condition. To give access to the users, you go to site settings. To check if a user has permissions, you can go to the site permissions page. Click check permissions. Search for the user and click check now. The list of permissions are given stating that the user has permission with full control. To grant permissions, you can click grant permissions and type the name or user ID or email and then click share. To grant permission to the web application, go to manage web application from the central web central administration. Click the site you want to give access and then click user. In the policy, click user policy and then add users. You can give the permissions as full control. You can view, use that as a system account if needed and then click finish. So here's a quick summary of what we saw today. We saw the ways to monitor or troubleshoot SharePoint using various methods like using the event viewer, the central administration, this ULS log viewer, which can be downloaded for free from my MSDN site, then the SQL logs, then the developer dashboard, then using the performance monitor and PowerShell. For advanced troubleshooting, you can use tools like Fiddler or MDS from Microsoft. So thank you.